there's this adage that says that until the lions start to ride, the story of hunting will always glorify the hunter. This is one of the things that I thought we should be doing on ourselves, especially for somebody who came from the continent. And that's exactly what we, what uh, Rice, Beans and Gumbo was able to do. Growing up in Nigeria has been mixed blessing, I would say. One of the things that I, I learned from Nigerian society is that that spirit of resilience, you, you want to struggle, you want to do something, you want to achieve something, especially when the opportunity is there for you. Rice, Beans and Gumbo, it's, um, it's a name that I created based on the colors of those three food. I see rice as very clear. When you look at rice, you can see everything right there. And I see that as a fact in black history. Then when I look at beans, when you cook beans, you have this brownish kind of color. You can hardly tell whether something is inside or not. I see that as the fictions in black history. And the gumbo, the convolution and everything, putting everything together, I see that more as uh, the frictions in black history. I thought that would be a perfect title for the exhibition, especially when the idea behind the exhibition is trying to tell the history of blacks and trying to debunk some of the misrepresentation and try to create a different narration about uh, blacks in history. I was able to look at the origin, how Africa was before the advent of slavery. To actually look at those history helps us to understand the culture and the people that come from that history. Until we address those issues that came up from there, from history, and things that are still happening now, we definitely will not be able to get rid of that. Look at the civil rights leaders. I wanted us to look at the way they achieve those goals. They have these different parts, different goals. That's what my painting is trying to depict when I put all these people together. I emphasize on making the process part of the content. I don't want to have something as gory, as terrible as, as slavery to be on a very smooth canvas. The terrain was not that smooth when they were fighting for civil rights. They were actually going through so many troubles and uh, challenges. And that's one of the things you see with my work. You don't see my painting on a smooth surface. You don't see it on an even canvas. It's always wonky kind of uh, disconstructed wood layers that you see that they existed on this, uh, on this very challenging and uh, uncomfortable layers. If it's too flat on the wall, people can ignore it. I want something that you'll be going and all of a sudden you're like, oh, something is there. That means it has already affected your consciousness. You know that something is there. So now you want to pay attention to his narratives. In one of the paintings that I did on Mansa Musa riding the horse, I made that painting more colorful because I wanted to show the colors, the vibrancy, the, the atmosphere in Africa before slavery. Then when it comes to the idea of slavery, it started getting duller, the colors getting duller and all. But when it comes to the civil rights, I use black and white mostly because I feel like now we're talking about black history, number one. Number two, we're talking about people who are really, really going through a lot of terrible moments. And that's why I use that black thing. If you see my, my black and white paintings, there are thousands of gray tones in between. These are nuances that we always lose out or we always fail to discuss when it comes to uh, social, political, or cultural discourse in our society. We just go from black to white, and that is just not something that could create uh, the enduring peace that we should be gravitating towards. We have to come together, whether it's black, white, or yellow, or green, or blue person, and then, I mean, in order for us to, uh, to move forward.